Good evening, I'm DK Ronsdow. Welcome back to the TTT News. Me and my Partner and me and my wife passing my, my green corner. And two women battling it all over. One of them bleeding and I fell like in between two of them and he thing in And I used to have me and my partner kinda of watching, walking and kinda of slow. But then I pass her by. A couple of things, but one woman in the crowd says, the more righteous. Me fighting for no man. And I just say that. I tell my partner, I say, boy, that's a topic. That's a topic. And later on in the year, I wrote it. But the, the, the genesis of it was a carnival Tuesday night by Green Corner. Too much fighting for a man. And I wish I had an offertory plate to pass around because I see some people saying, yes, testify gospel truth. But we are speaking to two members of the Carnival Institute, Kern Williams, a research assistant, and a videographer, Orlando Din Chong, about the series that is Kaiso Chats. So we say hello, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Good day, man. Good day to you, viewers. Uh, and Orlando, we start with you. Thank you. So what's, what's the idea behind um, the Kaiso Chats? Well, sometime last year, we were partnering with Tuco to do these interviews with Calypsonians. Um, well, one day while filming the interview, even though I was behind the camera, I was very much engaged in the conversation. So after the interview, I told him, uh, director at the time, Kim Johnson, that, hey, those stories are pretty good and we should share them. And basically that's how Kaiso Chats was born. That's an idea to share the stories of the Calypsonians to the public. And we appreciate that. <laughs> I, mean, I appreciate those sharing the stories and I want to get back into it just now, but Kun, let me bring you in for two seconds. Is there anything that you have a slightly different appreciation for after being part of this process? Um, well, I think for me, definitely, just let's just say even being an, a young adult, um, I would have definitely had an appreciation, I think, for culture and the whole and carnival on the whole. But I think being part of this project and all the projects involved at Carnival Institute allows me to see the connection, I would say, between what has happened and what is also current, seeing the relation between Calypso and nowadays, hearing stories from Bali, hearing stories from other Calypsonians, and even you know, juxtaposing them against our modern day, if to call it um, super artists and what they would have gone through. So I think really understanding the history and hearing these unique stories that we present in Kaiso Chats allows you to, you know, to truly, some may see the fun, see the humor behind it, but see the seriousness that goes into um, producing these songs. All right, and gentlemen, I'll throw this out to both of you in terms of like what determined your slate of guests and who the interviewers were as well. And I'll start with you, Orlando. Well, at Carnival Institute, we have a mandate to collect and preserve these things. So our interview process is ongoing. So, and just so, what made you decide, okay, well, these are the people that I want for Kaiso Chats? Oh, well, it all depends on the actual interview. And while we're viewing the interview, if we hear an interesting story, um, we'll put it up, you know? It's, um, it, it, it could be about a song, it could be about a past experience with the Calypsonian. Once the story interesting and we think the viewing public will appreciate it, I'll put it up. And I'm going to ask it's about favorites. It's all based favorites. on what the person says. I know sometimes people say they know everybody's, all of them is a favorite, everyone feel like the child, but what, what was your favorite interview of moment in this series? Well, I personally like, um, I forget his name right now, but he basically was arrested for whistling. And I didn't know that existed, you know, back in the 60s. That was very interesting to me. I was like, oh, you know, it was very interesting to hear that you can actually be arrested for whistling. <laughs> and and that, that was that was the one with All Round, though. And all Round, what, yes. what I found interesting as well is the fact that so many years later, this is the same person who he yes. him out. And when he, when he said the person, <laughs> call him Tony. Well, he knew it had to be somebody who knew him, as opposed to just <laughs> yes. saying, oh, well, Anthony or All Rounder. And being able to afford him this courtesy, Yes, come in, telling the person who's holding the gate, that's my manager, and then putting them in pride of place. And then the fellow being able to look back and say, this is what I could have stopped by my actions at that point in time. Yeah, so I think it's very nice for the general public to hear these stories from the first-hand experiences of the entertainers themselves, you know? 
And, and Colonel, I'll ask you the same question. What was your favorite moment story interview in the, in the Kaiso chats? I mean, I, I don't want to seem cliche, but that one definitely, I think, took the cake out of all the, the interviews that we presented, at least for this series, just to hear how, like, yo, someone, that this was on the law books, that who knows, it might still actually be on our law books, um, that someone was arrested for things like that. And I'm just kind of seeing too, again, with all the history that we're doing here, how much Carnival has evolved. Even in doing some of the research, we would see some of the um, declarations and proclamations from the early 1900s that would have banned particular things. And again, how years later we have sort of overcome that and transformed. So I think that all around the incident, um, as a young boy, young, young teenager, young boy around there being arrested for, for, for whistling because he was told he couldn't sing and he did something else. He whistled and that was still like a problem. And what that kind of drove home for me was the fact that it's not now that all wrong that could chat. Because in terms of being in front of being in front of the magistrate and explaining his himself and um, basically winning by his explanation and being able to open his mouth and talk, as people say. But who are some of the other people that are involved in this series? Some of the other guests that people, and I should say, we are playing these chats, Kaiso chats, on TTT, so you must look out for them. Uh, it's, it's your civic duty, doing it through the month of October, because we are celebrating Calypso History Month, because by Calypso, our stories are told. But who are some of the other people that are featured in the Kaiso chats, Kern? Okay, so we have all around, as you mentioned, we have one with Brother Resistance, we have as well with Bali, we have as well with Lord Superior, that's the four I remember off the top of my head right now. Um, and even though these were just the ones sort of selected for Kaiso Chas, as Orlando mentioned earlier, as part of our mandate, we have done numerous interviews with people within the Calypso fraternity and even other aspects of of carnival so i know oh yeah we also do have one with gypsy the one of ntc um like for instance i know we do have like on record we have an interview with singing sandra i actually have scheduled this week an interview with our reigning calypso monarch um terry lyon so while we are archiving and, and having this on file to to preserve our culture these are some of the the possible other kinds of chats that you could look out for in the future all right, and we have just under two minutes in this first half. Orlando, I want to go back to you. And because you, you spoke of being behind the camera, but being engaged and saying that this is something that the wider public, wider community should know. Um, what goes into you determining your camera shots and angles? And I ask that because there's some things, like everybody knows Gypsy's a kind of saga boy. So you getting that shot of him with his legs crossed. And what are some of the other things that you look for and try to share? When you're, when you're taking footage? Well, we just try to make our guests comfortable, try to make them not tense, so they can um, really tell the story freely and openly. We try not to have no any pretense. We try to make them comfortable. And definitely we see that some of them are doing that. Now, in terms of moving forward, though, because you said there are people that you already have on file, people that you've already spoken with, why do you think that we need to know these pieces? As opposed to just saying, okay, well, this is the person on stage, and that's all we need to know. That's the song they sang. That's all we need to know. Why dig, why dig deeper? Because all those things you just mentioned, everyone knows. Everybody knows the performances on stage. Everyone knows the songs. But very few people know the behind-the-scenes actions that goes behind the music or behind the entertainer. And these experiences that the entertainer experienced are very much relevant to the music they, that they sing. So I just thought people, you know, it'd be nice to share those experiences with the general public. And we come back to speak about some of those experiences and a little more when we return. We're speaking with Orlando Dinchong and the Kern Williams of the Carnival Institute. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Orlando Dinchong and Kern Williams of the Carnival Institute. Well, the, the ideal thing or the initial conversation was dealing about Kaiso chat. We want to expand in just a bit, but the same question that I asked Orlando, Kern, I'm going to ask you in terms of what's the need for initiatives such as Kaiso chat and other work that the Carnival Institute is doing? Oh, well, we, we see what's happening right now with 
Carnival 2021. That's the, the topic of conversation on everyone's tongues. And in order to be able to produce anything with it, a virtual carnival, put out a product there, we see the need for us to preserve what we have, what is happening currently for future use. We would want that in the next 50 years, the next 100 years, that when people talk about Carnival 20, Carnival 2021, and everything with this pandemic in particular, that we can present something, that we have work, that we have heard the stories of the practitioners in this field of maybe what they went through during this experience, and even every other thing outside of the constraints of COVID-19, how much they put into their craft, into their talent, all the behind the scenes work. So I think it's so important to educate the entire population old, young, mature, whatever you want to call, you know, your, your, your bracket, so to speak, of what goes into Calypso, what goes into Mars, what goes into Pan, what goes into the, the FET industry, what goes into every single aspect of our carnival. Well, it's, it's so important for these stories to be recorded and to be told and shared. And Colonel, I'll continue with you and I'll ask Orlando the question after. Now, it's one thing to say, okay, well, you're getting this sort of engagement this is how you feel about these conversations what kind of feedback have you been getting from the artists themselves Hearn? yeah so definitely in terms of practitioners in the field we have we have been getting a lot of of support i would say not just on social media, we see people actually sharing, reposting, commenting on the things that we put out there, but their willingness to, to have their stories told, I think that is so important and, and commendable. Sometimes we think that artists, you know, they might be too busy or they're doing, you know, so many other things that they don't have time for this. But I think everyone that I have approached um, to have this conversation to say, hey, we want your story to be told. We want your story to be archived. I think they feel that appreciation. They feel that here is this entity, the Carnival Institute, recognizing their work, that I am someone of value. So definitely in that regard, the, the support has been there, has been tremendous. Um, I, I, their, their willingness is, is we, we, we need it. Without their stories, without their willingness, you know, we wouldn't be able to, to get this um, recorded and on camera. And I'll ask you the same question, Orlando, in terms of like what kind of feedback are you getting from the artists when you're going through this process with them? Well, um, I think the artists are very appreciative to have their stories told on you know, in the platform. Um, as Kern said, they are very appreciative that we actually reach out to them, but usually no one does, you know? Um, so I think the, the public and the artists are very appreciative that we actually took time out to tell their stories to the public. A very positive feedback. And one of the things I'll also say is that I was really appreciative of hearing the idea behind Bali singing Shaka Shaka and what went into it and saying, okay, well, he wanted to do something that was a lot more aggressive in the sense that we ask and nothing happened. So it's fire next time. And bringing that to the table and marrying it with something that is current in terms of like Shaka Zulu being on the television at that point in time and saying, okay, well, this is the entry point for this kind of energy that I'm bringing. And being able to share that with everyone because I'm sure that that is something that people, many people may not have known as well. But in terms of moving, what, what are some of the other things though that the Carnival Institute is involved in? Because yes, this is happening and the series is happening through the month of October. What, what are some of the other things that Carnival Institute has its hand in? Well, early on, we, we um, as a pilot project, we attempted to do a movie. Well, actually two movies. One is a feature link, our soul turned inside out. The other was a short movie, March of the Mokos. So, it's all in the same spirit of Kaiso Chats. We have all this information, all these interviews, all this content. And we have to try to find an entertaining way to release this information. Because it makes no sense to just store it and lock it up somewhere in a safe or archive somewhere. You know, the archive is only as good as people's appreciation of it. So a couple of the, as I said, a couple of the other past products were a couple of movies that we tried. And we currently on a social media drive to get people to know us. And when you're on that social media drive, and I'll ask you, can, so give me that social media information, please. Yeah, so definitely, definitely, please like and follow us on um, our two major platforms. That is on Facebook. You can look for us at um, Carnival Institute. 
as well as on Instagram at Carnival Institute. And you will see everything that we have been doing for the past couple months in particular uh, with our social media campaign, which has been under the direction of our creative director, uh, Marianne Braley, where every day we have specific themes. So whether it is Music Monday, whether it is Topic Tuesday, whether it is Way Back Wednesday, or even Thursday Reads, we are an institute. People come to us for support, for research. We have a lot of students from all over the globe have been reaching out to us in Switzerland, in Jamaica, in, in other parts of Europe, Germany, in, in Korea. People have been reaching out to us to get information for their research, um, PhD, master's level. So that's one other thing that we do on the social media has definitely been a, a way of support to see us say, hey, they posted this information here. Let me contact them about it. So we are available um, for, for your research needs. So if you reach out to us, we are more than willing to assist you to just spread the joy and spread the knowledge of this thing called the spirit of carnival. And definitely, it is one thing to have it in black and white, you write it or you type it, but it's totally another thing to be able to see and almost kind of get drawn in to the visuals and the sounds that would be recorded. In terms of research, what are some of the things that you're trying to look for? Is it that you get a name? Is it that you get a topic? You spoke about having themes for the different days, but what directs your research? Okay, so it's a couple of different things. So one, uh, particularly with social media, the, 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 the hashtag themes that we have definitely assist us with that. Whether it is, as I said, on uh, um, Thursday Reads, for instance, we know we have a library here, we have an archive that we usually, the team of researchers, we would perhaps pull a book from a specific topic. We sit and we meet and decide what we're gonna do in advance. So for this month, Calypso History Month, um, that has guided the entire, October process. So in September, we, we focus on steel pan, but it's not limited to that. We tend to each, each researcher has their own little niche, so to speak. And you generally see that in terms of what each one puts out. So I, I tend a lot to look at diaspora carnivals, having um, lived outside and experienced it for a bit in, in the UK and in Jamaica. So I, I tend to focus on that a lot, tying into how much of our carnival has made a global impact. In terms of research, let's just say someone who needs assistance, we do get a wide variety of topics. So we usually have a bit of a consultation with them first um, on what their exact research is. And through that conversation, then we're able to direct and direct them to specific books, help them with um, topic ideas or what information we know is out there to then say, okay, I think your research, this would be um, supporting it. This might be difficult in some other areas to get. This is a substitute of, of, of um, the information that would be beneficial to you, as well as the supporting media that we have um, can also be shared. Some of the pictures and the, the video footage that we take out from so many events during carnivals, some people also um, need uh, media support. And that is also an avenue that we assist them with. All right, so gentlemen, we want to thank you very much, Kern Williams and Orlando Dinchon, for the work that you're doing and letting us know about it. So we're looking forward to see what's happening in November, but this is about the Carnival Institute and the work, necessary work, timely work that is happening so that we can know ourselves and see ourselves. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Roster. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. <laughs>